maybe that was uh, projected. Uh, all right, lots of announcements in the bulletin. Particularly, want to draw your attention to this Saturday. We're going to attend our first uh, work day over in the garden, uh, community work day. Now that it's not um, raining every single day, we're going to try. Uh, it's a day where we clean up the community garden, we organize our tools. Um, I don't know if you know this, but that that huge uh, garage for the house that we bought, we walled off a two-car garage for those who rent the house, so they'll have a full two-car garage for the suite. But then there's like a one-car garage, and the whole upstairs is walled off for church storage. So we're going to put all our tools in there, down there, and then... Um, We'll have to do storage. It's uh, we we triple our storage space basically. So thank you, Chuck and Mike, for doing that. Um, so that's great. Anyway, so getting stuff organized and cleaned up. This is the first one. It's weather permitting, so support and rain. I, I won't be helping. So you're welcome. You're welcome to go middle any time, but I won't be doing anything if it's pouring rain. So uh, and then you see dinner, council meeting, uh, the Emmaus. Reunion group meets here uh, in April, and then there's your Holy Week schedule. Uh, so we have a lot, a lot coming up in the spring. Um, are there any other announcements that I haven't put here or that you want to highlight? Go ahead. The women are going to start a new study by Priscilla Charter. It's called Discerning the Voice of God. Um, and it's how to recognize when God speaks to you, which I am really excited about because sometimes I don't know if it's my own little brain or if it's really God because I tend to just not listen. Anyway, um, if you would like a study book, it'll be thirteen dollars. If you don't, just come and enjoy. We're gonna we're gonna have a good time. Tommy Farm is gonna be your facilitator. I'm really excited about that. Um, and I want to I want to give a shout out to John and Tanya because they're gonna take the honor of our God that we just finished. And they're going to go to the ranch in Pulaski, and they're going to lead the armor God to the residence there at the halfway house. And that's really exciting to wow. me. That I think that's a fantastic ministry that we're, we're reaching out and we're, we're being God across hands and feet to people in the area. So I'm excited about that for you guys too. 6.30 in the Lee Munsee room is where we meet. We're going to do an intro tonight, and then we'll get started next week. Well, if that's uh, if that's all the answers, I invite you to move about the room and ask for peace and love of Jesus Christ to one another. Peace and Christ be with you.
Maybe they were.
I'm getting to there. So that's a big problem. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Christians have always done this. I, I don't. I don't think so. Um, but I know that in American Christianity, uh, historically, at least in this country, we tend to view things as sinful or unsinful, like some, as taboo or not taboo, and it's sort of black and white. And we say, well, the Bible says it, and that's, that's that. You're right, the Bible did say it, and that is that, but there's more to it than that. Unfortunately, um, the whatever it is or it is not said, it's just not black and white clear as crystal. And you, and, but you know that already. You already know that. So imagine, okay, so, so there's different kinds of sin, right? I mean, sin exists in different ways in different places. What is sin for one may not be sin for another, right? But you know that, right? Don't you know that? So let's, let's talk about different categories of sin. First, people say, well, all sin is the same before God. Sin is a status or an action of rebelling against God. So yes. But sin does not carry the same consequence, does it? So, for example, in Leviticus, we are prohibited from mixing fabrics. We are also prohibited from murder. Would you say those are the same? Or equal in any way? No. That's because sin has different, uh, sin has different uh, repercussions and consequences on earth. And in heaven, we are forgiven of our sin. We are cleansed of our sin. So it's irrelevant. You're right. Sin is the same, but it's not because it's the same. It's because you're cleansed. Your status is the same vis-a-vis -vis God. It doesn't matter how bad or how, how, how not bad it is. But there's also the fact that sin can be a condition or it can be an action. So, for example, you can commit a sin, you can also be in a state of sin. They're both sin, but one is a, a condition and the other is something you did. Sin could be intentional or unintentional, could it not? I mean, how many unintentional sins have there been? Anyone not done that sin unintentional? Right? Is it worse if you intend to sin? What about, we talk about Christ as healer. Christ, we've had a lot of, of, of cleansings that we've been talking about in Luke so far. And we talk about how sin is like disease. And disease is a form of brokenness. God wants us healed. Does it mean you're in sin if you're diseased? Kind of. Not like in, in an intentional way. But in the fact that God isn't pleased that you're not well, God is going to heal you. Right? It's not sin like you think of sin as like rebellion. It's like God's not done with you yet. God says, let me continue to heal you. And if you resist that healing, then that's an unintentional, that's an intentional sin, right? It's so common. It's so common. It's not simple. It's not just as simple as this is a sin or this is not a sin. There's also, again, for different people, sin is often situational. So, for example, in the scripture we read today, Jesus is lambasting the Pharisees for tithing. You will never hear a preacher say tithing is a sinful thing. <laughs> I won't say it. But Jesus is implying that their tithing, their practice of tithing is a sin for them. Because they're ignoring the weightier matters of the law and they're holding themselves in a high esteem for following the law. But that's not what it's about. How can it be sinful to do a commandment of God? <coughs> you know, we humans create sin out of thin air. You know, we are 
factories of sin. We will make a sin out of anything. We can make an idol out of the best gifts God has given us. Right? You win a million dollars in the lottery. Well, you inherit it for uh, some legitimate way. All right? A hundred million dollars. You can make that into a factory of goodness. You can make it into a factory of sin. Right? Money is just money. It's, it's just neutral until you do something with it. Most things are, to some degree, on a scale or a spectrum. And so, when someone comes up and says, it is blank a sin, do you see why it's like so hard to answer that? Do you see why I struggle? But you, the youth expect a response. You can't just not respond, right? The sin is not clear. Okay. That doesn't mean we don't believe in the scripture. It doesn't mean we don't follow the scripture. It, what I'm saying is the scripture leads us to understand sin is complex. Um, so what the Pharisees are doing is they are following the letter of the law. They're saying, this is, this is what you do, this is what you do. You don't do this, you don't do this. And Jesus says, you're still getting it wrong. There are over 600 commandments in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. We've studied much of it. We've learned many of those commandments. And they're following each one. And you've got to think they're following it. At least they have some desire to be in communion with God. Some, well, they do. <laughs> but they're following these things God has set forth for them. And Jesus is saying, got the whole thing wrong. It's because God does not give Moses the law to control us. God gives Moses the law so that we can know God. To free us from sin and slavery, right? And of course, Jesus comes and says, look, I have fulfilled the law. Um, you can come through me. The law isn't about, so whether or not something is sinful or not, or how a degree or where it is on this giant diagram, is less important than searching God and seeking God in all you do. Now, Jesus points that out very clearly in the scripture. We can micromanage our sins and what we can and cannot do, or we can start by loving God, by actually prioritizing God and our neighbor, and then start from there. That sounds, cool. that sounds like a slippery slope, Pastor. No, it sounds like I'm an educator. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you're in education, or you have, maybe you know this as well, there, you can teach in two different ways. One is bottom up where you teach components of something and then you go all the way and you put it together in a complex thought, right? Or you can teach top down. You start with a complex thought and then you sort of break it out in pieces, okay? So for example, uh, you're cooking, uh, let's say I'm teaching you how to cook something, and, you know, and, I, and I might get this ingredient ready and get this prepped and then that ready and then this and I explain the origin of this and then I put it all together into this thing. Or, I can show you this dish, you can smell the completed product and sort of sample and see what it looks like, and then we break it down piece by piece. Right? Do it either way, right? Okay. Uh, in Spanish, we do that too. Uh, we usually, textbooks are bottom up in Spanish. They teach you the little parts, and then they start putting them together in sentences, and the problem is that um, the teachers never really get that far. <laughs> uh, so you can do top down. You just, I can teach you a whole sentence or a whole phrase and then break it down later. I don't have to tell you to break down. You can learn a whole sentence in Spanish and know what it means and not know why. I mean, it's, you know. Okay. Here's where that doesn't work, though. What happens if you start teaching about the different parts but you don't get to the finished product? What good? is some half-cooked pasta, a piece of chicken that has been dusted, 
but not fried, some fresh grab, freshly ground herbs and spices, and the cheese that's still in the refrigerator. Are you just going to sit down and eat that? Of course not. Right? You have to go all the way through and cook the, uh, the dish, or it's not, it's not worth doing. Or, or you won't be able to, you won't be able to reproduce it. Also, if I start with the final dish, I can't just show you a finished product and expect you to make it unless you're an expert chef, right? I have to show you each piece or it's not going to do you any good. You can eat, but you can't make it. The Pharisees, uh, the, 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 the law of Moses, which the Pharisees are uh, uh, charged with teaching and, and illustrating living, the law of Moses is a bottom-up sort of way to God, right? Here's all these laws that you do. And the idea is when you do them, it will start molding your heart. And it will rain, and you will begin practicing justice and mercy, which is what Jesus is railing the Pharisees for not having. And then Jesus comes along and says, look, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your mind, and all your soul and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus is talking top down. And the law of Moses is bottom up. Both of which are good and holy if you go all the way up and down. Right? You have to go. The Pharisees are starting at the bottom, but they're stopping halfway. Also, you can just say, oh, peace and love and joy in Jesus and not actually work on not sinning. Right? You, can, you know what I'm talking about? You can start at the top and never really let it change the minutia of your life. Or you can get all the details right but actually still be cold. So, is it sinful? I don't know. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's stand together as we sing.